All right, so this was the first year that we've run um, the FTC program out of the middle school here uh, in New Bedford. So the Keith Middle School is the only uh, middle school in the district that has the FTC program. And FTC, FTC excuse me, stands for um, First Tech Challenge. And um, it's just a more intensive robotics program, you know, initially designed for more high school age students. Um, but we've had a lot of success this year um, running it with, with uh, middle school students. And there are a good amount of growing middle school teams um, in the New England region. They were part of a winning team um, back in Lexington in January. So now on February 27th, we will be in Natick at the state championship. So hopefully we perform well there. Okay, so I'm Hong Yu Zhao. Um, Adam Bentley. Um, don't say you, bro. And this is our robot for the First Tech Challenge. So one of our main features of our robot is our plow. And it's an adjustable plow, which means it can go up and down. So why we need it to go up is because, one, it has to fit into an 18 by 18 cube. And two, to, we need to push around debris. And another reason that we need it to go up is so that when we climb the mountain, it won't interfere with us going up. We also have another feature on this side that actually with uh, the shape of our tread, so it makes it easier to go up the mountain. Um, so we have um, we've tightened the to tighten the tension, so it uh, makes it a lot easier to go up the mountain. So we have these servos here. Because on the mountain, there's little like triggers we have to hit to release. They call them climbers, and you get 20 points per climber. We, we have to make them go up or down because when we're going up, if we have them down, it'll it'll hit the sides and it, when we have them up, the plow can't go down. I'm learning JavaScript right now on my own at home. This is just a drag and drop program. The uh, blocks are pre-coded for us and we just determine what uh, function each block performs. I'm currently working on the autonomous mode right now, which is going to let the robot move on its own for the first 30 seconds of the match without us using the controllers. Uh, main issue we're running into right now is actually getting the plow to come down without us pressing any buttons and stay down the whole time. So what got me interested in robotics was like, so ever since when I was a little child, um, <laughs> like every year for like my birthday, I would get like um, remote controlled cars and remote controls, uh, helicopters, and everything like that. So they were really fun. So I was like, why not build one myself like, and learn uh, how to program and everything, so. That we're we're going to have to come up with that data. Yeah, let's put the bottom. I don't know, it's moving a lot faster now. Does it? Oh, uh, raise it, yeah. Where this design mainly came from was when we went to our first competition. It looked nothing like this. It was really small. It had a cardboard plow, not a metal one. Uh, the servo arms were the only thing pretty much that stayed the same. And after we went to the competition, we um, saw a lot of different robots. And they gave us a lot of tips like to, to put tension onto the treads. And we saw a lot of teams with metal plows that worked a lot better than our cardboard plows. So we were like, let's combine all these things into this really great robot, and that's what we did here. Well, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of um, support um, through various groups, especially um, Newick, um, and the kids have really capitalized um, on the opportunities that they've had. So every time that they get an opportunity, they've capitalized, they've seized on it, and um, they're very successful in whatever we throw at them. Um, every time we think, uh, let's see how they do this time, every time they get that chance, they always go and they perform really, really well and we couldn't be more proud of them.